Well, hello, and welcome to today's Faith Moment. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Diane Green, and I'm one of the licensed lay ministers at All Saints Church Chapel Bridge. And I'm talking today during the season of Lent about the topic of forgiveness. Um, and about living in the fullness of what it really means to be living on the right side of the cross, to be Easter people, living on the resurrection side of the cross in the fullness of all that God wants to give us. But just before I do that, a reminder in case you don't know, that all of the past faith moments from both of our churches are archived in a single playlist on the All Saints Appley Bridge um, YouTube channel, which you might need like to look back at. So thinking about forgiveness, that we ask and believe in forgiveness. But I want to tell you a little story first of all about something that happened to me a few years ago. I was shopping in Liverpool with my sister and I'm not keen on shopping. I know some of you love it, but I'm not keen. So we'd been around a few shops looking for clothes. We couldn't find them. And Linda, my sister, says, oh, let's go up to TJ Hughes's. And I got all dramatic and went, no, no, I've reached my shopping tolerance level. There's no way that I can go all the way to TJ Hughes's. And she looked at me like I was crackers and said, it's only up the road. Um, but you see, I was remembering back to a time when we were children, when we'd gone shopping with our mum and we'd walked to TJ Hughes's and it felt like we were walking up Mount Everest but actually it's only up London Road it's only up a little hill and we went to the shop and we found what we wanted the point I'm making with this story is that sometimes we live in our fears from the past we live in our childhood fears and we haven't really moved into the maturity of where we are now and that can happen to us as well with forgiveness that we're still kind of living in the past and we haven't moved in to the fullness and the joy of living in God's forgiveness and the first of the things I want to mention about forgiveness is about asking well you might wonder if we know we're going to be forgiven and we are if we ask Jesus to forgive us he will forgive us so why have we got to ask well, acknowledging that we're sinners and that we've done something wrong will help us to grow towards spiritual maturity. If we don't acknowledge that we've got it wrong, we're unlikely to change. And you see, we can't have fellowship with God in our sinful state. Sin separates us from God because sin is not okay with God. And it's only through the sacrifice of Christ and through the cross that we're able to to get back to God because God loves us he does love us and he loves us as we are but he loves us too much to leave us the way we are he wants to pour out his grace on us but he needs our consent to do it he's not going to force himself on us and we might think well why why don't we just accept that that's wonderful um, and sometimes we are reluctant to really believe in our own forgiveness because sometimes it's easier to believe that God loves the whole world than it is to believe that he utterly and completely loves us and forgives us. Because after all, we know what we're like. And it takes me back to thinking about Genesis and the story of the fall, where we were, we're reminded that we're separated from God by sin and disobedience. But the temptation not to believe that came there, I believe is the same temptation, the same old lie that we keep falling for now, out after we. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord had made. He said, did God really say you must not eat from any tree at the, in the garden? And it's the same thing, isn't it? Can you really trust God? Are you really forgiven? Does God really mean what he says? Same old, same old, we keep falling for it. But yes, we can, because our evidence is in the Bible. There are more than 70 references to deep and radical forgiveness in the Bible. God just wants us to ask for it. But it comes again, doesn't it? Can we really believe that? Is it too good to be true? Because in everyday life, 
If somebody offers you something that's too good to be true, it usually is. But that's not the case with God. Our evidence is in the Bible. As I say, more than 70 references to deep and radical forgiveness. And two of my favourites are here on the screen. One from Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. And the other from Luke. That even on the cross, even on the cross, Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. The story of Joseph from the book of Genesis, I think, illustrates the point about the importance of believing in forgiveness very well. I hope you'll remember from the story of Joseph that he was sold into slavery by his brothers. They sold him to some Ishmaelite traders. He was taken off to Egypt. But because God's grace was upon him, Joseph prospered in Egypt. He was able to explain Pharaoh's dreams to him and stave off a famine that would otherwise have destroyed Egypt and indeed the surrounding lands. Joseph's brothers don't recognise him when they come to seek to buy food from him. Joseph tests them, but eventually he reveals who he is to them and ostensibly his brothers are forgiven. His brothers, they send, he sends them home to get the dad and 70 uh, people from the promised land, from the tribe of Jacob, come to live in Egypt to escape the famine. And there's a famous bit at the end of this story where Joseph forgives them. And I'd often thought that was right away until I looked again at what it actually says in the Bible. And it was 17 years later when the boys, when, they, when Joseph's brothers finally accepted and really believed in their forgiveness. Because 17 years later, their dad passed away. Um, and he told them a few home truths before he went. But when the father had died, they were still worried that they hadn't properly been forgiven. They said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? And I think this is the old lie again. Can you really trust God? Does God mean what he says? Is this forgiveness full and is it forever? I don't think they really believed in their forgiveness, even though all the evidence was that they had been forgiven. They were living in Egypt. They were living a good life. They'd been given all these things by the brother. Surely they'd been forgiven. But I wonder if there'd been issues that they hadn't addressed, that they were still living with guilt that they hadn't really forgiven themselves. So then they think, oh, maybe we better sort this out for ourselves. So they go and see Joseph and they say, dad said that you've got to forgive us, basically. They say, your father left these instructions before he died. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they have committed in treating you so badly. And that also reminded me of something from my childhood when I used to say to my parents, Linda, that's my sister, Linda wants to know if we can have a lolly ice <laughs> because you think asking on somebody else's behalf might sound a bit more noble but you've easily sussed when you do that it's asking for yourself that you need to do because they will be forgiven for who they are and it's the old lie again can you trust God, does God really mean what he says and Joseph says this bit that to me is famous at the end of the story God intended it for good to accomplish what is being now done. He's saying, I'm not God. You've been forgiven. Am I in the place of God? And he reassured them and he spoke kindly to them. And they had been forgiven and they were forgiven and they stayed forgiven. But what struck me is that it's 17 years later that they've been through 17 years of unnecessary guilt and anguish, believing the same old lie that we still fall for sometimes today. Can you really trust God? Does God really mean what he says? Are you really forgiven? Will you stay forgiven? Will he give back word? And the answer to all of those things is yes. We can trust God. God is bigger and better and more forgiving and more gracious and kinder than we can ever imagine. He won't give back word. And the cross, the cross is our proof and guarantee.
So keep asking for forgiveness. And above all, keep believing in forgiveness. Believe that you are fully and freely forgiven. Reject that same old lie and live in the fullness of the forgiveness that God gives us. Amen. Bye-bye.